fighting stance and he is now, I am in a dual situation or there's multiple opponents, whatever it is, but I am in a fight. Uh, so I'm not just you know, grabbing randomly someone off the street and just doing this to him. And so his hands are up, he's coming at me aggressively, or he's starting to put punches together. So far, at first, we start with his hands up kind of front of me, it gives me my reference. What I'm doing is like a boxing pair. I'm killing the lead with my rear hand and entering in with an elbow to also protect against that punch. So boom, at the same time protecting that punch, I'm dropping the hammer, opening open my hand, and then adding a headbutt. What this does, it gives us a nice little reference on this arm. If you notice, I'm just kind of grabbing it over the top, not matching onto it. It's more of a reference where it can start passing and moving. Uh, so the first one we looked at uh, was the Kimura. We did a lesson on this uh, a few weeks ago, uh, so we're kind of plugging in here. So I'm just gonna go one, two, drop in, add my headbutt, and then I'm add another hand over, and I'm gonna come over for the Kimura grip. I turn so everybody can see on the camera right here. So this is nothing new, we have the Kimura grip. Obviously, uh, we don't want to give up a back, so with the Kimura grip, we're kind of playing around and running him into the wall. Boom, smashing his face, and you're jacking him up there or coming around and taking his back as a shield. Uh, so it's one of the first simple ways you can kind of play around uh, with getting on that arm to use a grip that we're pretty comfortable with in Jiu Jitsu, which is that Kimura grip. So locking it over, and as I'm doing this, so I'm bringing that hand over, I'm trying to clip in that elbow again. And I'm not just staying high, I'm trying to bring his posture down. So you see how it drops him in. Now I've got that strong lock, I step out, and back step and drive his head, boom, right into the wall. Obviously from here I can start ripping him and, and punching him or, or finishing him with the Kimura there. Uh, you know, be creative, fighting's fun. All right guys, now we look at one of my favorites, the straight arm lock off the W1 entrance. And this is using the power of the underhook control. So I'm coming in, killing that lead, boom, dropping through. And this is why it's important not to reference a thumb. When I can, don't reference the thumb, I just now his hand can travel through the hole, all right? When I travel through the hole, I actually bring my body forward and I'm trying to hike that up to my shoulder. And as you guys see, I've got that pinch right there, I've got this lock right here, and I'm just snapping that down. I can bring it right to me or just, just break that arm right in half. So again, I'm here, boom, driving in, hammer, stopping that headbutt. Oh, see, now I made a mistake, I grabbed the wrist, I'm thinking about going for Kimura's. If I grab the wrist, I have my Kimura, or if I'm just coming through, I now feed through, shove it on my shoulder, and get my lock right there. One more time, nice and fluid. Boom, boom. Drop that headbutt, coming around, and then there's my lock. Okay, next one to look at is Cody Mwashi. So same thing again. Boom, boom, here. Now this is comes off, I'm almost going for that Kimura grip, but I come lower, and I get my hands to that palm. Now two hand, two thumbs over, and now I'm gonna kind of step and pull him and just drop right on top. This was really tough. You can see how the, uh, you know, if you guys are interested in the one, I highly suggest you learn a little bit more about Japanese Jiu Jitsu, but I'm driving that hand in, keeping that out locked, and, he, and I, you, just, you just feel that tension right in his wrist. So again, one more time, boom, boom. I'm coming through, headbutting, elbowing, coming over that arm, getting my two hands on him. I can't, I, I, it's like I find it, doesn't it? Oh, I'm sorry, it shows up. It's not like I'm looking for it. I should get my hands in position where it's right there. But now I'm just to step back and away, turn my body, and drop it right in. I know, buddy. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, another that we were just playing with this one, uh, variation is kind of cool, is that doing the same thing, boom. Now I'm coming from my Kimura lock. I almost get it lower on the wrist. And now it's like, whoop. Sorry, I know I'm almost sucked. But it's, man, you can see how quickly that comes on just by having this. I can add that hand in there too. But if I start hooking it right there to add a, a nice strong wing elbow, whoop. You can feel that thing. Nasty. Thing is ripped right off. So one last time. One, two, coming through, over. I have that one here. Now I'm just gonna turn back into him. And now I'm back into a wall series, whatever. Uh, what's cool about Aiki Jitsu is I'm using his smallest, smaller joints to control a tremendous amount of his body. And that's just a really cool concept uh, when you're talking about it. It's the hardest thing to do when you're doing Aiki is you can't just fucking grab somebody and do that. There's no way when he's choking me. I'm just gonna grab his arm and do this. It just doesn't work, all right? Uh, so you have to work on breaking down your component, uh, opponent, and that's where our entrances of tri tech jitsu really come in. Okay, our last one, we're actually gonna go, actually, why don't you come over here? Uh, we're gonna go off on the cross side, all right? So he's gonna throw that jab, boom, cross, boom. Now this is a kind of similar, like, boxing pairing, but now I'm gonna enter through, boom, with that drop elbow. Obviously, he hammers and punches, but now I've got my wrist reference. Uh, this is a weird one that's going to require some training. I step in front of him, two hands on the wrist, step in front, then back step all the way around. Uh, can you fall from here? Sure. And I just drop. And Sean takes a nice high fall. Uh, Sean has a lot, a lot of experience uh, doing falls, so he can make 
uh, this look really nice. And if you don't have that high fall, you just get face planted and it's a really bad day. So uh, be careful if you try to with your friends because that's a, that's a vicious one. So one, two, entering, boom. I can use something to get the Kimura lock first. Now it doesn't work, I pass it over, drop. And there it's right there, okay. Boom, boom, boom. And then there's one more option we were playing with too, is actually going for the knee knock off. That one, two, and that elbow, and a knee knock, boom, creates a lot of space. I just pass that hand over, drop behind him, and he's got a nice fall. So I will reiterate, guys, that I cannot just grab Sean's wrist and do that. It just doesn't work. All right, there's no way I'm gonna grab him, pass it over, et cetera, et cetera. I need to break him down. And for a tri tag just it's very, very important to us, or any combat jiu-jitsu system, I need to break my opponent down before I can do jiu-jitsu. Japanese jiu-jitsu is beautiful, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is beautiful, all the grappling arts are beautiful, but we're talking from a combative standpoint, how to actually do it when someone has you know, ill intent towards you, uh, whether it's one guy, multiple guys, you need to be able to use those combative entries that uh, TriTac is really known for and that really, we really work hard on developing for you guys. So all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna jam, right? So uh, based on this jam in, and then add that frame one wing elbow attack you guys are just doing for the elbow clear. So like Mike said, it's gonna come over. I'm gonna score there, all right? And what we're looking to do is this elbow is gonna come down and it's travel underneath as a frame to his head. Okay, so one, two, frame here, and we're gonna add a quick knee, boom, and then we're gonna add an elbow lock. So, when I have this hand here, I'm looking for my hand to reference his elbow, right? If I'm gonna be a dick quickly, it's just quick snap, right? Or when I snap it and I control it, I'm gonna make a, a pound to pound grip called a gable grip by right his elbow, and I can step back or just pull him. I mean, nice, obviously. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta train with them. <laughs> Alright, for my friends, we're gonna jam in. Elbow clear. Knee. And then I step back. Get my grip. Now, the arm can travel into the shoulder or in the crook of the elbow. I wanna feel that my bone is riding basically his funny bone spot. I can then step back and snap or just. And that's the feeling. This is meant to be a quick snap. I can get a control feeling off it and drop him down, but a lot of times I'm gonna roll out of it and I have to get to a little bit more of a grapple. But we wanted to snap them. So just right from here, this is jam in, boom. All right. Now the same thing, that handles over here, come over that top, that wing strand oh, yeah. on the top. My right arm to drop down as my left arm comes up and hit him with another elbow there. Control. I had a switch, I hit a quick switch knee. Boom, here, and I get my grab. My, my, uh, my, so uh, I want to have the feeling that this is actually another hit and I'm framing away with it. So I, I, I'm pushing away the head and his elbow catches, all right? So I'm not getting committed to shoulder, I'm committed to the elbow, and now I've got that, that space for the knee, and then there's my lock. Sorry. So, one, two, think about your frame, this is coming up and framing out. So I back was my fence position, but I've caught his arm right here. It should feel like a natural reference. I can just hit a uh, quick knee right there behind that nice switch, power to the belly, to the head, and now I bring it back, I got my snap. Just to really guys to know, sometimes the arm's gonna turn. It turns, it's very easy to bring him down and start on ground and pound, but I don't want to commit to the ground right now. Let's look at that elbow snap. Cool? What we're going to do is we're going to work off of the grab. Like I said before, um, if, if anybody gets within an arm's length distance, your hands should go right up, okay? You don't, you don't want to have your hands down. Uh, you see a lot of idiots, they, they get in each other's face like this. And they, you're just warranting a headbutt and getting knocked out. Okay? So as soon as somebody, you're going to feel the altercation. You're, you're just going to know, okay? And your hands have to go up. It's, it's a necessity, okay? So as he starts coming forward, my hands go up. 
and he grabs me, okay? He grabs and he goes to hit. So I have to cover this shot initially, okay? If I just kind of avoid that and I get hit, then I'm getting hit, okay? So I have to block that first, okay? So my hands are just gonna come up. Okay, from there, I'm gonna take a little step forward and I'm gonna hit him with the elbow. Okay, from there, if he holds onto my, my shirt, it's better for me, okay? If he lets go, then I lose him a little bit. All right, so I, I don't have this movement. But if he holds on, it's actually better for me, okay? So we're gonna work, he holds on to the, to the grip or I'm fast enough to, to cover it. Okay, so grabs, hits. Now from here, I hit and I drop down, okay? I wanna wrap the arm, I step through and drop down. Now from there, this hand is gonna swing. Now, in the middle of this, you have multiple things that you, I, I could hit as I'm coming through and then put my arm up, okay? But for now, I just want you to get this arm swing, okay? So, he grabs, I block, I hit, I walk through, and I swing the arm down. So I wanna catch it so he can't retract the arm, okay? Now my arm is gonna come up, and then this foot, my left foot, is gonna step out, okay? Now, as I step out, this is gonna come to my head into my frame one. Okay, so I step out and I drag back and I snap as I come out. All right, so hands up, block the grip, boom, come down, out, and then back out. So the, the motion itself kind of breaks the grip, you're gonna see, but you vice it in so tight that the grip is broken, but now it's riding on his lat. So now he can just snap it. Okay, you're gonna see, notice where he does it in the movement that it actually breaks my grip. Right there. And now it's broken. If I don't let go at that point, I'm already snapping my, my elbow. All right, it's already hyperextended, so I, I have to let go. And then the snap, it's just riding on his lat for a nice, easy transition snap. If he doesn't get it, who gives a shit? But he's going on to other things, so the idea is to just get it during the transition of moving out. Okay. One more time. Box shot in. Down, up, and out. Okay, on to the club. Now, the club or stick is a representation of a, a blunt force weapon, meaning something I am swinging. Oh, shit. Sorry about that, buddy. That was very mean to me. I am swinging. He didn't even flinch. He didn't even flinch. He's <laughs> a fucking badass right there. <laughs> I have, I'm swinging it at someone, okay? So, hypothetically, it could be someone maybe had a long knife they're swinging at you, but... Uh, it's just a trajectory you're looking at right now. Uh, you can take the same trajectory with knives, uh, but it's more of a blunt force weapon, okay? Uh, so that could be anything. In your mind, it could be a bottle, it could be a cell phone, it could be you know, keys, it could be uh, have sticks, a weapon off the ground, it doesn't matter. It's just a blunt force weapon, all right? So, uh, first thing to look at is called a jam, jam entrance. So when I think about this, I'm now trying to fit my line inside big to put that weapon behind me so I start getting overhook controls, okay? Or underhook controls, depending on your height, we'll go into overhook control right now. So I don't wanna just get in there, uh, you know, nonchalantly. It's a forceful entrance of jamming in, but I'm also loading this elbow. That's a really big piece of it. So my full work too is I'm not going square. I'm actually thinking, I'm thinking almost like throwing a left hook into him or throwing a lunging jab where my feet start creating an angle and start loading my hips so I can whip back the other way. Really important concept. So as he throws in, Boom, and this, this elbow is ready to go, whether it be a vertical strike or horizontal strike. And I'm gonna spin them really quick. So, both of the, the whole, when I throw the elbow strike here, it's I turn my body in. When I throw a horizontal strike, I turn my body in. So, think about as I'm throwing like almost like a, a one and boom, two. But my footwork, it comes here and then it steps out to that line as I throw the elbow strike with my right arm, okay? And that's essentially going to load his right hip uh, and put him off balance with sets up all Soto Gary, which is a very simple takedown that I love. Uh, should be used all the time when it's all combative. So one, now I turn, load it, step two, okay? Now I've got, if I need to add an elbow wave, I add an elbow wave, okay? Or if there's already going backwards, my feet should be in line. If my rear leg comes through the hole, I trip. Once he trips, I have to stay on him. Instantly, knee goes to the hip to the belly, okay? This hand comes underneath. So, if you see, I'm gonna slide you back, let me get you out of the dark. Okay. So, Anthony's elbow is right here, okay? So it's right at that spot, everybody can see that. This part of my hand 
goes right underneath the divot of his elbow. It should feel like a catch a little bit. And a good way to test it is I keep out here and I push into it towards his ear, towards his head. See, he reacted. That means I'm in the right spot. Okay, if I don't get a reaction, I know I'm not doing good. It's gotta get, whoop, I want the reaction there of his body and his hips. Now I keep that there hand on the bicep and I think about cutting, digging underneath with that wrist so it gets really nice and tight. And then I roll my shoulder back, shoulder blades back, and then throw, mold my hands forward. And he taps, okay? Entering, bam, big elbow, off balance, boom, throw, right on top of it and pull. You can finish here or you can break, the, you can actually break the arm if you want. But as long as I get the weapon and he's out of the commission, I'm okay. So one last time, okay? Here, boom, throwing that elbow, okay? As I throw that elbow, I turn my hips and over. Boom, okay? Now, hypothetically, you're a smaller person. This becomes, can I move your hand really quick? This becomes face into the finger, into the eyes, okay? So let's say I'm a woman. Uh, do I look like one right now? <laughs> do I? No, thank you. Uh, so that my, I'm thinking about my jam is here. Instead of now coming across with an elbow, right? I come up with a chin jab and my, eye, my fingers go right to his eyelids, all right? Well, go right through the eyeballs and it's trying to drive that all backwards. Very, very vicious, very uh, effective at driving the head backwards, but um, the reason why we're doing it is because he just tried to hypothetically kill you. The answer you have to take is like, if I hit Anthony as hard as I can with this against his head, could I kill him? If the answer is yes, then your level of escalation needs to match that if you're talking about defending your life. You can't just be like, well, I don't want to hurt him, so I'm not going to drive my fingers through his eyes. Drive your fucking fingers through his eyes. Whatever you can to be the most vicious, disgusting person in the world that gets you out of the situation in the hands, gets you out of that chaotic moment so you can survive and do all other stuff, okay? So that's more important than what exact technique you do. We're trying to give you guys ideas that you can play with. All right, so one more time. You throw it in. One, two, change my angle. Now I may get here. I may elbow him again, I may headbutt him again, but I'm always making sure that, that that weapon's there, that he can't get his other hand involved. I off balance him, I trip him, follow him up, this hand underneath, drive it, lock it in, breaks it, I take it, okay? I'll get pull you back a little bit. So let's look at a couple of the variations of this finish, depending on how he reacts. So new students typically have a hard time getting this feel and this ends up happening okay so first thing I'm gonna go do is that when we get here and it's not working I'm gonna put my hand on the ground knee over right next to his face pinch my knees together hands come out and I just break it over my thigh right here so bam all right so really it was simple I was here let's hold it knee down the ground squeeze my knees together and I break it by almost like trying to slap my ass with my own hand and then violently shoulder blades back and that will Break it, he'll just drop it as a response. All right, last one. I'm here again, boom, he turns. I let it turn with him. I lock it in, step over, and now snap the shoulder. So we're here again, boom, he turns. I let it turn, I step over. I even can come down on it if I want, and now I just snap the shoulder. So as a review, you have three of them. You have one, pulling it, that one, two, coming over, and three, he bends. Break. Okay, now we're gonna enter on the backhand side. So, there's a lot of things, so let's just put it this way. I have a lot of long range with this weapon, all right? So, when I will swing on a backside is when I miss or whiff on the initial swing. Now, there are ways that we force the miss if he's roll. I can roll with it and come back in, okay? Uh, or I may just be way out of that range. I can slip it and come back in. But I want to think about, it's almost a rocking chair both ways. Will I use some advanced tri when I'm rolling and then jamming back in? Or I slip it and jamming back in. I want to think about, we're kind of going back into a frame. So we kind of entered like this before. Now we're kind of entering like almost like a fence, strong fence, but like open hands. So he comes through, I miss it. I now, boom, I'm looking to get this, get this connecting and jam it, all right? Now this one, he had to move quickly because I don't want him to pass off. So we have a couple different entry points. I can come right across the face again and pull and break that arm, or I can start coming around the head and pulling it behind me, all right? Now it all depends on your footwork. 
if my footwork again, if my footwork comes in here and I get into this, this spot first, well, I'm already around the head, I'm gonna pull it and stay on that line. If my footwork is a little shallow, boom, I'm gonna come through here and pull it. The idea is I'm hitting or hitting and ripping to pull him away. So let's just break those down individually. First one, I whiff, I enter, boom, I come in here, this one's gonna come around. I have two hands over, I always think like, if I go back to my fence, if I'm in here defending, I go back to my fence, where's my hands end up? So, they're ending up right here. This one's keeping it away, five fingers on. It doesn't help me by holding. Five fingers on, and think about pulling it to your pocket. This hand comes underneath the jawline, and rips open, and I take a spot behind him. Now, I feel that, like, I feel like his elbow is peeking past my belly, and as I pull and pull, whoop, that arm snaps. He will drop that thing, so he's breaking it. And then I want to finish him off. I let this hand go, boom, and clothesline him over the top. When I clothesline him over the top, I can actually go into a choke. So one, boom. This is meant to break it right here. So drop that for me. I just broke his arm. I hope that thing drops. If not, I'm still going to clothesline him. I come over to clothesline him, boom. I rip him right around. Oh, he wants to go down. I can either choke him out right there or bring him to the ground however I want him. Okay, so that one more time. One, two, three, and boom. Okay, really quick too. This does not have to be underneath. This could be an eye rake as well. To get the same effect. All right, I'm just raking the eyes, making him blind for a second, distracting him so hopefully he drops a weapon or something. All right, next one, I come in shallow. Whoop, boom, I'm on the arm here, okay? So that I want to come right over the top, like either downward hammer or descending hammer or punching across and then stay pulling okay, here like we were before. Now we can finish the takedown that we did before where I just lay out or we can get back to our wrist again or we we'll go to a different one. We're we'll come underneath, I'm gonna get a figure four grip, right? As I get my figure four grip, I'm gonna retract out and bury him out. Now I can snap there, right there, wrist lock if I want to as well. And whiff, whoop. Boom, on it, figure four grip, drop them, control them, move them around if I need to. If I need a break, easy break. One, two, okay. If I catch his arm here, it's good, it's fine. Anywhere in the body is fine, I have, a, I have a response each way. My response is this hand gets involved. I come in front, come over the top, come in front, boom, stepping over, all right? Elbow, elbow, hammer, punch, just keep this away. Now I figure four, I can sort of snap that arm elbow right there. See how it's broken right there? Boom, break it. Now I spin around. I tell my elbow here in the face. Boom, elbow, and drop him. And keep adding that rotation, pull up on it, or just continue to strike. One, two, okay? Now, this is, now I'll put it right now. This requires sensitivity and training. e I want to get the soft feeling. All right, that my hand comes underneath and saws around on top that I can now scoop and drive with this elbow, with this forearm. So I think when I'm just bringing him down onto the ground and I can just do whatever, I can snap it right here, boom, or just have freedom of movement. So the Ikajo itself is that I'm looking for like this feeling, an elbow wave. You could do with a hand, I have my new sense of that, but eventually you want to have that forearm that you learn to catch it and roll it over the top. And when you have that, you have a very dynamic response on what you can do with them. You have to get this good feel on being on the wrist. So, he whips, whoop, boom, roll it, drive it right in, kneel on it, break it, control, and just kind of keep it locked in there if I need to. Now, the objective is when he stabs, we're not going to try to grab it. We're going to create this like called frame, all right, to keep it away for us, all right? And we're also trying to be entering in, boom. So we want to keep that knife on the outside. We're also trying to score here, keep that in, and step through and add a knee. All right, I got a couple options here. It all depends on what he does. First, we're always going to try to break that elbow right there. If I can just break that elbow, that arm, that arm is gone. He may turn his wrist, when he turns, we're going to catch, capture, capture, this is what we're really going to do today. Capture this wrist right here. Or step back and pull on it until he drops it and fuck him up a little bit. So again, same hollow offense with boom. 
B, okay? Now, if he tries it, I'm just gonna keep wrenching on it. If he bends it, it'll come down, grab here, right at the, right at the wrist level, and just bring him down and get away. So, one more time. One, two, okay? Try to break it there, catch it on the wrist, and I'm gonna bend it. 